the sin that we've been using um, is not like muting everybody right when they get on like it used to. So um, I just muted those of you who have been on for a little bit, but um, you just check and make sure you're muted. Um, that would be great. Um, I hope you guys are well. It's early in the morning. <laughs> um, I really love this chapter of our book today because it just speaks to something that I get asked about a lot and um, kind of excited to dive into it with y'all um, about eating and food and the way that we use food um, to fulfill things that food was not meant to fulfill really. And um, I think that when it comes to trauma, that there is a lot of eating that takes place to fill or stop what's happening inside of your body. So if you are in rest and digest, meaning that if you've just consumed a lot of food, then your body will not trigger into fight or flight, or it will stop the trigger that you have in your body that takes you to fight and flight, fight or flight or freeze. Um, so eating helps calm your nervous system. And that is something I think that a lot of people experience. Um, I think too that eating helps protect you in certain ways. So if your trauma is abuse or neglect, then you may not have been fed. So eating obsessively and a lot compulsively um, is a way that your body's just making sure that you're okay. Um, also, if you are a survivor of sexual um, assault or violence, then eating might be your mind way of trying to make your body undesirable for that kind of thing. Um, there are lots of ways that food can trigger us and can um, be a tool for us. Um, anore anorexia, bulimia, those kinds of things um, usually have their tie to a trauma of not feeling worthy, of um, needing to be in control of something because you were not in control at one point um, and those kinds of desires. And so if that's something that you struggle with and you would like to talk about it more, um, I would love to talk with you. You can email me at beautifulandbeloved, all one word, at gmail.com, or you can direct message me on Instagram and we can talk about it. Um, I'll read to you a prayer for us getting started, and then um, we'll go from there. Blessed are you, O oh God, who created the world with a word, and who fashioned your people from dust and from delight. In our waking, may we know you, breathing in us, breathing through us, creating us anew along with your longing and love. And so today, we're going to read what she wrote, and then we're going to do a practice that really connects us with our digestive systems, with the energies in our core. And then um, I'm going to give you a little challenge for the day. An illuminating and entwining of food and security and love and how these relationships are part of our history. M.F.K. Fisher offers lovely and compelling images. Yet, our hungers have also had deeply shadowed sides. At a basic level, the story of Eden helps to explain why we sometimes experience such a tangle when it comes to desire and food. Anything involving these is certain to grow complicated at some point along the way. Eden speaks to how these things, hunger, eating, pleasure, peril, are bound up together in our personal story as well as our collective history. Our patterns of eating or not eating manifest those complications. 
anorexia, bulimia, obesity, and other conditions related to diet and habits of consumption, our bodies bear witness to the complexities of food and desire, made all the more convoluted by the wildly conflicting messages that some cultures may convey. It can be extraordinarily difficult to find good answers to the basic question, what do we eat? And beneath that, what are we hungry for? In her book, Appetites, Why Women Want, by Caroline Knapp, offers powerful reflections on the hungers of the body and soul. Writing in particular of women's relationships with food, with wisdom, born of Knapp's own struggle with anorexia, she traces the threads that link appetite, identity, body image, pleasure, and love in contemporary culture. Near the close of the book, she writes, appetite, naming it, satis satisfying it, is a monumental struggle for most women. A long distance swim against a current of painful feelings goes on to state that she treasures the signs of hope given to her by women who have swum against that current of pain and finally made it to another shore, new altars of desire built on the bank. So the question for this practice is how do you relate to food? What history lies within your hungers? What did you eat as a child and what did you do without? How does what you eat tell you about who you are? Oh, those are some deep, hard questions. So just get comfortable on your mat and sit with those questions for a minute. How do you relate to food? What history lies within your hunger? What did you eat as a child or what did you do without? How does what you eat tell about who you are? Or what does what you refuse to eat, tell about who you are. Let's just start by loosening up. I'm just gonna move side to side. You can join me if that feels good. If you're like blown away by these questions and you're Feel like you need a minute, you can do that too. Remember that this is your yoga, your practice, your body. So you get to be in charge of how you move today. So you just move however feels good. Good. Draw the shoulders back if that feels good to go back. The floor, instead of side to side. Take some torso circles here and bring the hands to the knees. Matching it with my breath, inhaling as we come forward and then exhaling as I pull back. Up in the other way. Noticing the sensations in your body here. How does your belly feel?
again and come back to the side to side that we started. Yeah, take the hands up to the ceiling and just reach. <laughs> there. One hand and then the other. Coming up out of the torso, making the space in the ribs. I'm just going to come up to one side, whichever one you want. Good. We're just going to stretch to the side. So maybe your hand needs to stay straight. Maybe you can bend it. Maybe it can touch the earth. And make sure you're keeping the hip of the raised arm pinched the mat so you feel this really long stretch all the way down the side of your body. That's how I feel. Maybe they feel it someplace else. Maybe your hips are a little tight. Bring your attention to the sensation. What you're feeling. Maybe you take your gaze up toward under the armpit. Maybe you want to take your gaze straight ahead. Maybe it feels good to release your neck and look down at the map. Good. Press. All the way back up. Couple shoulder rolls here, taking the shoulders back. Good, and then the other side. Opposite side of what you just did. Good. Stacking one long on top of the other. Breathing into the sensation that comes all the way down the side of your body here. Reach and breathe. What do you feel? Remember your head can go anywhere. It can be released down. It can look straight ahead. It can go up through the arms. And then press up and this time shoulders roll forward. Mm, good. You can let our feet come long and just reach for the tops of the toes here. You may catch them, you may not. If you don't catch them, fine. Stretch for wherever you can. Draw the shoulder blades back. Open the heart space. Close the eyes if you want to and feel your belly on your thigh. Send thoughts of loving kindness to that belly. Mm. Thank your belly for letting you know when you're hungry. For letting you know how and when to feed it. And draw the feet in. Soles with the feet together. Clasp the toes and press down on the sides with the elbows. Draw the shoulder blades back and down. the opening in your hips here. It doesn't seem like your hips and your belly would be connected, but they strangely are. Good. We're going to let one leg go long, and we're going to take um, one leg and bring it to the opposite side of the knee. So we're sitting up nice and tall. Both of the ones are in the mat. We're just going to take like a little twist. So maybe you just want to hug your knee and look over to the side. That's totally fine. Um, if you would like something deeper, you can bring the
the hand of your bent leg behind you, fingertips pointing to the wall behind you, elbow to the outside of the knee, taking a little bit of a deeper twist here. Totally up to you, however you feel. Whatever feels good in your body, this is about listening to your body and noticing the sensations in your body and doing what feels good. Again, the belly presses to the thigh. You can be really aware of it. And as you're really aware of that belly, you can bring it thoughts of love and kindness and gratitude in a world where we typically bring it thoughts of self-loathing and hatred where we ignore our gut feeling. Good, and come back to center. Squeeze the knee in a little bit. Good, we're gonna take the knee into the elbow and the ankle into the opposite elbow and just rock the baby a little bit, loosen up our hips. I don't know how close you can see my toenails, but I am in desperate need of a penny here. Good, sitting up nice and tall, rocking that leg. Good, and bring the leg down. Opposite leg comes up. Sit up nice and tall. Good, draw the shoulder blades back and down. Take the foot to the opposite side of the knee if that feels good for you. Both bones root to the mat. You can just hug that knee and turn to the side. You can take the hand of the bent knee, bring it behind you, and take the elbow to the outside of the knee. Taking that twist just a little bit deeper. Feeling the belly against the thigh. Breathing here. Good, when you're ready to release, come back. Take the knee to the elbow, the foot to the opposite elbow. We're just gonna rock that leg in front of us. Maybe you just grab that foot with the hand, that's okay. My hips are tight. We're just gonna move it around. Good, loosen up that hip. Beautiful, bring the legs in front of you. Shake it out a little bit. Sitting up nice and tall, draw the shoulder blades back. Reach for the sky. Ooh, good, bring the fingertips behind you, um, or the hands behind you, fingertips facing back wall. Both of the feet come together. Sit up nice and tall. This time, draw the shoulder blades back and down. Open up the heart space here. Good. You're going to roll over and come to all fours on the mat here. Good, we're gonna draw the belly up and in, and we're just gonna take a couple cat cows, drawing the belly up and in as we exhale, and then inhaling, opening the heart space, dropping the belly toward the mat. Good. Use your breath here to connect to your belly. 
worry less about what the other parts of your body are doing and really connect to what is you're feeling in your belly. The difference that happens when you drop it down for the mat versus when you pull it up and curve the spine. Gonna give yourself a few body circles here, either way. Maybe you love the cat cow, so you just keep it going. Whatever you would like with your practice. Good, we're gonna bring our bellies all the way down to the mat now. We'll bring yourself down nice and slow. Good, forehead to the mat, hands to the sides. Take a couple of breaths and feel how your mat is cradling you. Feel that breath when your belly expands into the mat. Connect all the pieces of you that are touching the mat. Imagine them connecting straight to the earth, straight to creation. Good, we're gonna draw the shoulder blades back and lift our heads up off of the mat here. No weight really in the hands, just lifting ourselves up. Big breaths and then exhale down. Good. If that feels good, you can just keep coming to that pose, inhaling, lifting up. Maybe press just a little bit into your hands, just a little bit higher. Maybe you don't. If that feels good to you, you can take the hands to the small of the back, interlace the fingers. So your knuckles are pointing down towards your toes. Draw the shoulder blades together. And lift up and zip up through the feet for a locust pose. Again, if, if that first pose, if that cobra felt better, do that. Good, and back down. Forehead to the mat. Good. Do locust one more time. Inhale, rise up. Good. From here, you can bend the legs, reach back for the outside of the ankles of your feet. Again, if you would rather just stick with cobra, stick with cobra. This is about you and your body and what feels good to you. And if you would like to, on your next exhale, kick the feet and lift up. Purple to pose. Good, and lower yourself down. <laughs> My dog's trying to come over. Good, breathing that belly into the mouth. Good, take your hips back towards your heel. Let your knees come mat with the part, big toes touching. Get to the heels, child pose. Good, reach those arms out long. Good, feel your belly on your thighs. Bring up just awareness to your belly. Loving kindness. 
an intention to listen to the belly. Beautiful. Good. If you want to stay here, you can. If you want to move on, come up to all fours. We're just going to take the right leg behind us. Good. Rotate the foot so the pinky comes down toward the mat and our hips are nice and even. You don't want to, if you have a mirror to the side of you, you don't want to be able to see your whole butt. Just this side. Draw the shoulder blades back and down. Open the heart space. Draw the belly into the spine. Reach that foot back. Good. And then pull the knee forward. Tuck in, chin to chest. Good, and reach it back. Good, this time when you pull it in, we're gonna set ourselves up for pigeon. So the knee comes behind the ankle, the foot comes to the rest. Did I say ankle? I meant wrist. So the right knee comes behind the right wrist and the right ankle comes behind the right or the left wrist. And you set yourself up here. Um, I'm super tight. I haven't been able to practice yoga in a while. So um, if this is painful to you, if you don't like it, you can grab a block or a pillow set up underneath your hips, um, which I think I'm going to need to do today. There we go. There we go. Set up nice and tall. Good. And then we're just going to hinge forward. All the way down. Good. Here you can bring your forehead to the mat or a block or a pillow. You can just stay up on your forearms. It's totally up to you. My hips are really tight this morning, so hang up a little bit. Good job. All right, and then from here, oh, we'll take it back to all fours. Maybe shake the hips out a little bit. Good. And then we'll take that left leg back. Remember dropping the hip. Dropping toward that pinky toe so your hips are nice and even. Reach it back. Good, pull it forward, knee to down. Take it back. Reach it forward. Left knee behind the left wrist. Left ankle behind the right wrist. Walk that foot back. If you need a little bit of support, no shame. <laughs> Good, sit up nice and tall. And then hinge forward. Feeling that deep stretch in your hip. Bringing your breath and your intention there. Good, and go ahead and take yourself back to all fours and then down belly to the mat. Lying nice and flat on your belly. This is gonna be where we end today, taking some nice deep breaths, belly on the mat, you can bring one cheek to the mat and switch and bring the other cheek to the mat. I'm going to leave you with our blessing for today. 
as you breathe and soak in our practice. That you may know what it is that you truly hunger for. That eating may offer pleasure, harmony, and deep delight. And that you might find God there. And so that is my challenge also and the blessing for you today that you just be aware of what you're eating, why you're eating, how it's filling some void for you, how it's nourishing your body, and to see if you find God there. I hope you do. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste. As always, ladies, you are on your line.